Hi there. Now for this last part, part C, we're given that on the graph of the particular solution defined in part B, which by the way I've copied down here, the first turning point for t greater than 30 is the point A. And what we've got to do for part C then is find approximate values for the coordinates of A. And it's only worth two marks. Now we'll point out before you attempt this question, if you want to pause the video, that in the examiner's report, it mentions that hardly anyone was able to do this part of the question. So it's quite a challenge. See what you think. I certainly don't think it's worth two marks. It's worth a lot more than that. But uh, as I say, have a go. See what you come up with. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, the point about this is that t is, first of all, greater than 30. And this is quite a large value. And why I'm mentioning this is that when it comes to this term here, 3 times 30 obviously is going to be 90. e to the power of 90 is going to be very small. So what I'm going to say is that as t is greater than 30, okay, e to the power minus 3t will tend to 0. So therefore, I can say that x at this stage then is going to be roughly then just 1 18th sine 3t. Okay, so that certainly helps a bit. It knocks out this term. So what I'm looking for then is essentially to work with this and find the turning point. So I've got to differentiate this with respect to t. So if I differentiate this with respect to t, it follows from here that dx by dt will equal 3 eighteenths cos 3t. Well, 3 eighteenths is 1 sixth, and that would be cos of 3t. Now at turning points we know that dx by dt must equal 0 so I'm just going to put here when dx by dt equals 0 it will follow that cos 3t must be equal to 0. So it's a question of just solving this equation. So that means that therefore 3t is equal to the inverse cos of 0. And the inverse cos of 0 is going to throw up quite a number of solutions. First one being pi upon 2. Next one would be 3 pi upon 2. And then if we keep adding 2 pi to each one of our solutions now, we would get the next one would be 5 pi upon 2. And after that, 7 pi upon 2, and so on. Now, if I divide throughout by 3, that will give me various values for t. t would be equal to pi upon 6, 3 pi upon 6, 5 pi upon 6, 7 pi upon 6, and so on. In fact, what would it be generally? Well, any of these terms can be given by 2n minus 1 over 6 multiplied by pi, where n is a positive integer. Now, we're told that t is greater than 30, and t is given by this general term here. So, what we're saying then is when 2n minus 1 divided by 6 multiplied by pi is greater than 30, then we should be able to rearrange this and make n the subject. Well, if we times both sides by 6, we'll have 2n minus 1 all multiplied by pi is greater than 180. And then if I divide that by pi, we've got 180 over pi. That would equal 2n minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. 
We've got that, that will give us 2n. And if I divide by 2 or times both sides by a half, I'll end up with n being greater than a half of this value in here, 180 over pi plus 1. Now if you work that out, you find that n turns out to be greater than 29.14 and so on. But n has got to be a positive integer. So the smallest positive integer greater than 29.14 has got to be 30. So n must equal 30. Now when n equals 30, we can now find the value of t. If you substitute 30 into our general equation for t here, you're going to have 2 times 30, which is 60, minus 1 is 59, so you've got 59 sixths pi. So t will be equal to 59 over 6 times pi. And what would x be? Well, if we substitute this value here into our approximate value for x, for large values of t, 1 18th sine of 3 times 59 6 pi, well that turns out to be that x equals minus just 1 18th. You get minus 1 coming off of sine 3t when t is 59 pi over 6. OK, well, did you manage to get that? If you did, I think that's pretty good, especially since, as I say in the examiner's report, it says that hardly anyone was able to get that. Is it worth two marks? Well, in my opinion, no.